Welcome everybody to Jim White's favourite football podcast, the Only Fans football podcast. On this week's show, the lads have a deadline day special. The lads discuss the current situation with the Ivory Coast FA and Mo Salah carrying Egypt to an AFCON victory. The lads taste a vegan Kinder Bueno while discussing all deadline day shenanigans. The lads discuss Frank Lampard's appointment at Everton and the return of Christian Eriksen to the Premier League. Be sure to check out our Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, Twitter and TikTok and we hope you enjoy the show. Take it easy. It's deadline day, baby. <laughs> I spend these senses tell me this is going to get fucking tasty, baby. I will love it if we beat them. Love it. There's a slice of cheese when you go to your topless. I have a dream. Bartler. Eh, uh, the fella in the green and white short. The guys up in the joint have asked to be put back in their cells. <laughs> <laughs> if you stop waffling, we might get some work done. He has the goo blood. He has the goo blood. Get out! Get out, man! You ain't got. Virigi! Torres to get Chelsea a place in the same line! Let me add a little bit of spice to that. Is he a fucking spice? My grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. I think I'm a special one. I'm the normal one. I never knew stuff that I did. Harvard is the best on earth. <laughs> the silky German, he's just what we need. He won Chelsea, How do you know the this? champion. We were actually singing it the other day, funny enough. Right. Hello everyone and welcome to the only fans football podcast deadline day special we are sitting here in the sky sports studio my god Adzi. <laughs> we're here uh, we're here <laughs> we're here uh, i can't speak oh my god we're here with harry red now harry if you got anything to say oh i'm a i'm a london geezer i'm here on deadline day trying to make a few transfers I fucking hate Deadline Day, man. I'll be deadly serious with you. It's an absolute shell of its former self. And it's a, it's decline day, I call it, because it declines every year. I'm sure you're not like me, Cran, because I'm, I'm an old romantic. I'm sure you've been on Fabrizio Romano's Twitter page all day, constantly updating. Ooh, what's Fabrizio saying? Ooh, let's go. <laughs> all this shit. I've been looking at Sky Sports since I got out of cut this morning. And I've had an absolutely yeah. awful time. A dreadful time was had. I swear to God, I hate, I hate everyone on this channel. No, you're dead right about me being a a, a newbie with Fabrizio. I was Millennial. actually I was watching his uh, Heineken Twitch stream today on oh Christ on Dutch. It wasn't on Dutch television. I don't know why I'm saying <laughs> that. It was in the Dutch Heineken building. Jesus, they let him in. They were giving him free Heineken and everything behind the bar. There was a fella coming on who worked there hmm. while Fabrizio was gone to the toilet, yeah. and he was sitting down. and He was saying. I do not watch football. <laughs> <laughs> he was literally he was he was talking about Dead or Night. He didn't watch a bar of football. He said he was he used to be a Roma fan when Totti plays. But he hasn't watched since. So he was Christ. just filling in for Fabrizio. To be fair to Fabrizio, right? I know I gave him a, a bit of abuse there. But Fabrizio Romano is what Jim White thinks he is. Like he's an actual genuine like O C K. Like he's actually in the know. And he actually has like sources, I'd say. Jim White just rings up Harry Redknapp pretends that he's on the phone to him was like Harry are you signing anyone Harry you know what I mean that's a horrible Jim White accent and I hope he's offended by it but here we are on deadline day Cran how are you good how are you yeah I had a, I, I'm, I'm grand man how was your week <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna dive straight into it but I'll let you, I'll let you start yeah uh, so Adzi my week has been terrific I went to McGain Town McGain Town baby it's a kick in there. back on Friday it it's you know what it's a toxic relationship it's mm, uh yes. it's all it's neither here nor there mm. but uh, i went there anyway and i went in had a good night went home went to work went to work again played a bit of red dead redemption and here we are mm. red dead redemption by the way at the minute red dead redemption too to be more specific is winning the poll at the minute for the hall of fame it's everyone's isolation favorite game mm. everyone isolation is playing it mm. I've, I've talked my mate started the train, so Ben was playing for the first time. Mm. I was like, I can't. I want to go back playing Red Dead Redemption. I started in isolation. My other mates in isolation playing Red Dead Redemption now. 
We're all playing Red Dead Redemption 2. It's like it's like a cute little family tree. It is, yeah. Made out of horses and cowboys. Arthur Morgan. <laughs> Dutch! <laughs> Dutch, we need to get out of here, Dutch! Uh, Sorry, yeah. the accent's so good. <laughs> the accent's so far up and awful. I'm going to lasso this woman, Dutch, <laughs> and I'm going to throw her on the train tracks. It sounds like Dutch. Senan, if he was in uh, <laughs> he was in Django Unchained or something, the noise, you know. <laughs> it sounds like Senan. <laughs> Speaking of Senan, Adzi, how was your, how was your week, Adzi? Yeah, it was a good week. It was a good week. The freedom. Oh, by the way, you're out of isolation. We're in, we're in the Potato Wad studio. Yeah. Recording live. Um, Cran, he's not riddled anymore. I have my booster pending this week at some stage. I'm riddled. I'm going to be boosted with five G. <laughs> and I'm riddled with Jim White. Yeah, yeah. I came there with a bit of fever this morning, but a deadline day fever. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a good week. It was one of the lads' birthday on Friday. Shout out to Fig, Fig and Matty of Kulak. We're out in the cock and bowl. I'm the grand old Fig Roll. I can't beat them now. To mm. be fair, yeah, we're we're out there and you know, freedom. freedom we're back, baby. We're back. You know, really, you can actually go to the pubs now. I not have to worry about anything. And it's uh, it's great laugh. And then Saturday night, like you, I was in McGowan's on Saturday night as well. I was in Mima's to start the night off with a good friend. And we had a little time. And then we went to McGowan's. And do you know what? It was actually good crack, to be fair. McGowan's is all right. You know what I mean? It's like like it's like being in a jar with sardines. It's packed. It's packed. But it is, for the most part, it is decent banter. You know what I mean? It's a good crack. You'd be lost without it. About one o'clock, every guaranteed every weekend, one o'clock in the morning, they just stick on a Westlife CD for a, a half an hour. You know what I mean? But look, you deal with it. McCown, we do love you. Just give us a sponsor. Like. And here we are, Monday evening, watching Deadline Day. What a weekend. Actually, I was watching the AFCON, like yourself. We'll have a bit of an update on that coming up. We got everything wrong again, by the way. We're so bad at predicting things. Yeah, in the man. NFL, quick NFL update, Cran, if you don't mind. Mm. The Cincinnati Bagels, as my old man likes to call them, the Bengals, of course, have got through to the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow, unbelievable in the game. Chiefs kind of bottled it. Pat Mahomes kind of threw it away. They kind of got rattled in the second quarter, and Joe Burrow just took advantage and they went through. And then the Phenom, the Phenom, he's like the Phenom of, of soccer. Um, and then in the later game, it was the Rams who got through against the Forty ers And I'm kind of happy. Like I know, I know you couldn't really give a toss about NFL, so I'm not gonna. Harp on too I watched much. the Super Bowl from yeah. Mark Chapman. Do you ever watch? Yeah, on BBC. BBC yeah. yeah, and you have the other two American guys. <laughs> they actually kind of like go together well. It's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it, it's the Rams up against the Bengals. And when I started watching NFL a good few years ago, about ten years ago now, I could never have had imagined the Bengals and the Rams <laughs> in the Super Bowl. So I'm delighted that they're both there. It's going to be a good Super Bowl definitely this year. But for this week's icebreaker, Cran, we have our favorite. Deadline day moments. Before we get into it, before we say the viewers ones, not many in. it's not, it's not, huh? There's not many of them. I think, to be fair, I think deadline day years ago, good crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will get into it, but, um, well, all I can say is that I loved it. It was of its time about 11 years ago. Mm. And now they have people, clueless journalists like Dharma Shesh and I don't even know what the other fellow's name is. Kai Savakal. Yeah. They, they, and did not have a tap on the likes of when they had proper footballers. Harry on. Harry Redknapp being the, probably the main one. And they're kicking off the likes of Phil Thompson, etc. But I'm not going to go. Paul into Robinson's that. been on today. Anton Ferdinand. I've been listening to them all day. They're fucking idiots. Like, you know what I mean? Anton Ferdinand was talking about Lingard earlier, and I was like, just shut up, Willie. You don't know what you're on about. But anyways, of an older ilk, I enjoyed Deadline Day years and years ago. I really enjoyed it. It was full of memes, um, and it was unironically good. Like. Like, I think the problem is, like, Sky took the irony out of it. Like, the, iron, the irony of a, of a reporter, of a reporter being outside a training ground and groups of men and children standing around them waiting for the club to probably not sign anybody at all. And doing absurd and they're, things. And doing it, yeah, and this is what we get into. But, like, that's when it was great. And then they kind of made it all, like, commercial. And it's, like, big black and yellow, deadline day, dun, dun, dun. And it's just not as funny anymore for me, anyways. Yeah. But we have got some deadline day um, memories. If you, do you want to kick us off, or will I re- read these first? Oh, I'll kick, I'll kick us off. Go on. I think my favorite deadline day memory. I think it was twenty eleven. It was the January deadline. Chelsea were about to sign Fernando Torres for fifty million off Liverpool. Yeah. And at the time, this was a big name signing, 
and I don't think there has been one on deadline day since, if I'm honest. Um, well, I think Ozil went on deadline day one year. But go on, continue. With that. Go on, go on, continue <laughs> he has big eyes. He's not a big sign. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I think Andy Carroll went to Liverpool on the same night. And it was just, be- it was beautiful. And you've seen pictures of Liverpool fans burning oh, jerseys. Geez. And this is the kind, they don't, they don't show that anymore. <laughs> yeah. They don't make them like they used to, you know what I mean? But it was, it was just a great buzz out there. That was my favourite deadline day. I, I remember watching this hmm. as well. Sorry to call across me. But I told you this earlier when we were talking about like our memories of this song. I said, I'll, I'll leave this one till later. Because I didn't think you would bring this up actually. I thought you were going to bring up something like my one that I'll say in a minute. But I remember watching this deadline day and being intrigued by it as well because it was, um, it was like a period of transition for Liverpool. So he had Hodgson. Hodgson bought so many shit players. And then it came to the January. Torres wanted to leave. Morelos wanted to leave. Um, we got Suarez. Kenny King Kenny came back. He got Suarez. We were linked with Andy Carroll. But it was always like, well, they'll get Andy Carroll if Torres doesn't leave. Yeah. And obviously as a young kid at the time, 2011, Torres was my favourite player. He had just won the World Cup at Spain as well. So there's a lot of things going into it. And I remember this day specifically. Um, I woke up. And this is when... Deadline day was at, at peak for me. I woke up and I wanted to watch it all day. So I wanted to stay at home and watch it. Yeah. So I woke up and I, I put fake tears in my eyes. I licked my finger and put tears in my eyes. And I rubbed my head to make it look like I had a temperature. And I went to my mom. I was like, mom, I'm feeling really sick. Can I stay at home today? She's like, I, like, like any loving mother, they wouldn't want their son going into school sick. She goes, yeah, no bother. So I stayed home that day and watched Deadline Day. Only to wake up the next morning in absolute tears that Fernando Torres had left. <laughs> I was broken up by it. I'm honest to God. I'll never forget you, it. You had, to get, you had to get the day off skill because you actually were yeah. sick. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was that was Deadline Day. It's peak for oh, me. Yeah, it. Great show. Um, we'll, read, we'll, we'll read a few of these real quick, right? Mm-hmm. so we have Eno straight away talking about Leeds as he does usually so he says Leeds telling everybody not to go to bed on deadline day ah oh, stay up we might be signing someone <laughs> only for them to sell two players <laughs> 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 we have a lot of shouts here so we have obviously like I think this is I think this is kind of one of the more famous ones is Peter Adam Wee we nearly had a similar situation today we'll get into it in a minute Um, turning up to QPR to Loftus Road <laughs> To Harry Redknapp, the geezer. Tried to force through a move. <laughs> he done an interview on Sky and everything. And I was like, it's not 100% true. Um, the deal's not 100% done. But it's looking like it's getting done. Only for it to not get done. For the clocks to go bong. Deadline day, sure. We have... <laughs> this is a good one from Cuddle. Any time it went to Stoke fans. Absolute creatures. <laughs> what a show. We have Jer saying, and to be fair, it was Jer Rory. There's a few people saying it. Alton said it as well. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Has to be the Everton fans putting a deal down in the air of the reporter outside Goodison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was, and that's why they don't do anything anymore. That's why they don't do it anymore. I know, they haven't gone to a reporter once in this, no. the whole time being here. <laughs> they don't do that anymore. Shay said that as well, of course. Um, of course, Shay said it. And yeah, that's it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read too many more. But if if anyone was looking at the socials earlier, they will have seen my favorite deadline day moment, Cran. Um, a reporter outside Norwich's ground, Carrow Road, I believe it's called, and two Leeds fans come up in the background and start shagging. And that's why they don't do it anymore. <laughs> but shout out to the Leeds fans for giving endless memories. Why would Leeds fans say? Because I don't know. They just turned up. It was on telly. We're on. T- imagine, right? Imagine, Cran. Come here, right? <laughs> this is what I find funny, okay? Imagine you're sitting at home, 24th of January, deadline day. Ring up on the lads. What's the story, Shay? Come here. Can you see Can you see the reporter there down, down at Daily Mount on deadline day? Yeah. Do you want to come down and we jump in the background and pretend to be shagging each other? <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine having that conversation with your friend well, you know be. what I mean well fairness to them absolute <laughs> legends absolute legends and that's why they don't do it anymore but um, yeah and they're not legends no they're definitely not legends <laughs> not at all oh. moving on Cran we're going to so what we're doing today is podcast Cran we're going to <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a, a messy one because yeah. we have a I suppose it would be more, be more of a chat while watching this but 
Oh, we'll be talking about the we'll be talking about everyone's transfer window. Yeah. All the Premier League teams. We'll probably rate them. We'll give them a rate now or something. Yeah. Not all of them, because some of them are just shit. Like some of them done done nothing. Like Chelsea doesn't do very much. Well, not yet. There's a potential deal going through at the minute, but we don't know if that'll actually happen. But yeah. We'll ask Carver Solihull, will you? And you give us some <laughs> backwards answer and say it actually is happening. And then about two hours later, it doesn't happen. I was talking to my friend's cousin there the other day, and he, he's friends with uh, Callum Hudson Adai, and he said that he would love Usman Dembele. So that means Usman Dembele saying sign for Chelsea. That's uh, essentially what they're like. <laughs> we'll start off, Cran. The Jim White special. We'll start off with Arsenal, okay? A bit of a mad January, right? Um, they haven't brought anyone in. They've they've gotten rid of a lot of players. And obviously, of course, the game against Spurs got postponed. And a lot of people are, you know, kicking up a fuss. But if you look at who Arsenal got rid of in this window. So, Ainsley Maitland and Niles went to Roma on loan. Kolasinac went to Marseille for free. Chambers went to Aston Villa. And Pablo Mari went to Udinese on loan. I'm not going to lie to you, I think Arsenal pulled the wool over the FAO. FA, Jesus Christ, FA eyes. Yeah, <laughs> I think Arsenal pulled the the wall over the FA's eyes. That was scandalous. I can't believe they got they got away with that. And obviously, the bigger news story today, I suppose. Do you wanna do you wanna take it take it away here with Aubameyang? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, Adzi. it's like the Omen Omen Wiggy part two, is it? <laughs> Oh damn, wingy! <laughs> you completely missed said that. I'm sorry. I'm really after getting sick to crap. The way you said that. Oh god, the autumn wingy. It's oh, a hard name to say, but uh, no, he he went flew to Barca in his big puffer jacket. Uh, you were talking about wool over the eyes. He had wool at the back of his neck, mm. and he got off the plane, and he was apparently he's trying to force me out through the Barca because he he's not playing for Arsenal at the moment, obviously. Yeah, so. And, I'm just looking at it. So a deal would go through if, if, if Barcelona got rid of a player. So the player that, that's kind of like up in the air is Usman Dembele. Chelsea need to get Usman Dembele for Aubameyang to get a move According to Barcelona. To this According to Sky Sports, which is yeah. like, they want to spin a story. But um, <laughs> so Aubameyang said earlier, he said, oh no, it was only a family holiday to Barcelona <laughs> after literally trying to get a move with him. But now in another twist, and it does make for good entertainment to be fair to Sky. <laughs> Um, it looks like Barcelona have, have agreed a deal to sign Pierre um, Emmerich Aubameyang which is a bit of a mad transfer window for Paris as well and we will talk about it in Euro Trash Treasure I think Arsenal I think they're going to be in trouble if for the rest of the season they're looking to get into European football hmm. like bear in mind they have no European football as it is they're out of the FA Cup they're out of the League Cup they're looking to finish fourth in the Premier League or in the top four with Eddie Nketiah and Alexander and Alexander Lacazette and Lacazette blows hot and cold as well. Yeah. It's not like he's world class all the time. First, he blows cold and cold for me. I yeah. think I don't think he's I don't think he's a top level striker at all. And I think Arsenal could be in trouble. Well, and they always were. True. We'll move on to Aston Villa Cran. I've all these written out, so I'll probably be taking the lead on I apologise. For anyone who's listening, and you can hear a lot of me. I'm sorry about that. It's not a bad thing. Um so Aston Villa in this window have brought in Luca Dean, which we've talked about at length from everything. <clears throat> they've brought in Callum Chambers from Arsenal they brought in Felipe Coutinho from Barcelona and they brought in Robin Olsen from uh, Roma and they've gotten rid of um, Wesley I don't know if you know Wesley he's gone back to Brazil to play for Internacional El Ghazi went to Everton on loan and in a move today Matt Targa also went to Newcastle on loan so we'll probably touch on them when we're talking about everything in Newcastle yeah. but just speaking about players coming in I think Luca Dean for me is probably the best sign in the window yeah definitely I mean He's he had such a good spell at Everton before he fell out of favour and at Barca as well. Maybe it was too big a, a move to go to Barca for him. Maybe too soon, yeah. Yeah, but he's really excelled in the Premier League and I actually think he's one of the best yeah. left backs in the Premier League. I yeah. would have loved him at Chelsea and I was very disappointed we didn't get for go for him when we have Alonso mm. and we have Emerson for the rest of the season. Yeah. It, we haven't even Picked up Emerson. So we have Alonso and we have who else? So it is disappointing we didn't go for him, but good, good, great sign for Villa. And then they've brought in so many other signings. Like that's probably an A plus transfer window for mm, them. Coutinho as well is a, is a great move. Um, And just to touch on Luca Dean. It's it's notorious. I am a shithouse towards everything. We all know that. Um, Luca Dean is a shithouse in life. And I've always despised when he played for everything. 
But I have to say, I'm delighted he got moved to Villa because I can actually enjoy him. He actually is a quality player. He's a lovely player. He has a wonderful left foot. Such a graceful left foot. He has a great cross. He can score a free kick. Um, for me, he's probably one of Everton. He would have been one of Everton's best players. Mm. And it's just another example of shoddy dealings with Everton. But great move for, for Villa. Um, and a big upgrade on target as well. Yeah. Like we've, we've called him umpteen times this podcast. Matt off target. And on a few times. And on, well, uh, twice. <laughs> but he's usually he's usually more often not he's he's bad. And to be honest with you, I, I think Luca Dean's just just a massive upgrade. Oh, yeah. Um, we move on to Brentford, who probably made the the earliest big transfer of deadline day was um Christian Eriksen coming back to Premier League football. Cran, what have you got to say about that? I think it's great news for him to get a move back to football. Yeah. Let alone Brentford. Yeah. Is. Fantastic news. Yeah, and they have a good Danish kind of contingency there as well, I think. Mm. So he's going into he's going into play with players that he's very familiar with. Um yeah, that day was I have to say one of the worst days I've ever, I've ever felt watching football. Yeah. Um I remember looking at it and I remember it panning back to the RT studios and then you had the players of course around them and it looked like it looked like he was he was gone. You know what I mean? That's it was very serious and it was terrifying. I, I was terrified looking at it and um, it's great to see him back playing football. It's great to see him back in the Premier League. Um, hopefully he's fitting well, and hopefully he can provide, you know, more moments of magic that he can provide. He's mm. a fabulous player, I think. It went on his day, he's best, he's best ever. Like you see him, what he did. Like I'm not, not gonna pick on us for example because we're we're not great, are we? But yeah, you see him, what he did to us in the Aviva. Yeah, and Four that, that goals. was at that game as well. Adzi. And I remember coming out of that game. You you know me, I like I love going to watch football and. Um, I go and watch a lot of live football yeah. but I've never come out of a game being more impressed with a player um, after that Ireland game and like we're obviously supporting Ireland and Ericsson just does that to us and it was it was unbelievable it was and, ruthless and, I yeah it was. and it was great um, and yeah I, I I just hope for him I hope he can perform and I hope he's you know keeping well you know yeah we'll see no pressure on him though that's about important one, one of the departures from Brentford was uh, Charlie Good. Charlie, not so good. <laughs> it was coming. It was coming. He played one game in the Premier League this season and gave away one penalty. Um, I think I remember the funny yeah, years. Yeah, he won't be missed. I have Brighton's um, transfers, like who they've brought in, written down, and it's Kozlowski of Pagan Szczesniak was bought for nine point nine million, and then he was loaned out straight away to Royal Union Saint. What how did you say Jalees. that? Jalees. and then Aaron Connolly went to Middlesbrough. That's a shit transfer now for Brighton. Isn't it? But that's the thing, like they, the that's why Potter needs probably needs to look to moving out of there. Like he's done what he has with Brighton. It's a project that he's done very well in to get them into mid table. There's, there's not an awful lot more he can do. No, you know, because they don't have the funding. We have Burnley's transfer window written down here, Cran. And for me, underrated transfer window. I think they've had one of the most underrated transfer windows here. We they've brought, they've gotten rid of Chris Wood for twenty seven million. Chris Wood, <laughs> twenty seven million. Yeah, and they've brought in Wow. Weghorst from uh, Wolfsburg for 12.6 million. Woot, woot. Woot, woot. <laughs> um, and for anyone who, who wouldn't be that too familiar with the Bundesliga, I'm, I'm not going to claim to be a hipster and be like, actually, the Bundesliga <laughs> kicks off at 2 30 on a Saturday. Um, he's, a, he's a prolific goal scorer. He is. He's a prolific goal I scorer. I was looking at his stats today. And I, 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 I'm sitting here thinking, I'm doing a Charlie Nicholas, Nicholas here. I'm sitting here thinking, how won't he pull this off? That they fr- I've said it. I said it to Dave earlier. They're after pulling the wall over everyone. I, everyone's eyes. I I would fancy Burnley now to stay up with the experienced players they have. Maxi Cornet come back from Afcon and this fellow Weghorst up front. I'd fancy Burnley to be to get out of this situation that they're in, especially with the experience they have. Um, Crystal Palace. They also didn't do an awful lot. Chelsea, another club who have done very little. Cran. Very irregular, but also not irregular in the last few years in January. Um, we move on so we move on now to everything Cran. and we start off with who they've brought in so Mikolenko from Dynamo Kiev 21.15 million pounds hmm. Nathan Patterson from Rangers 12.6 pounds 6 million pounds fuck's sake El Ghazi from Aston Villa on loan Deli Ali also has is, is, is on his way to everything yeah and I was reading on Twitter earlier that it's 40 million pounds they're seeing me buying him for hmm no, now, he's not worth that. Now, before we talk about Frankie Lampard, can we talk about this recruitment? What the fuck are they spending? I think this recruitment's mental. 
I, Lamp Parent hasn't signed any of these apart from I suppose he signed Van de Beek and well, I think Van de Beek was linked on Rafa was there as well yeah. but obviously Lampard got the deal through and then obviously Ali um, coming to work with Lampard and to be fair I think I know I'm, I'm giving grief about the you know price tag on Delhi Ali. I have gone to bat for Ali before even at the start of the season I am a fan of Delhi. Yeah. Um, and I do think look he's worked with Lampard who notorious for being a midfielder who runs into the box late on he scores goals assists and He's like you know what well, I mean? the best the at, best at doing it like you know all I mean? these so, all these attacking midfielders are looking at Frank Lampard and they're like I want to learn from the yeah, best so yeah. I'm gonna go there exactly that's why Van de Beek's gone as well um what do you think about Van de Beek I think look he's a player that even before he went to United I don't think he had much game time with Dortmund the season before or sorry with Ajax the season Ajax, before yeah. I think he played 19 games for the, the whole season so he's a player that hasn't really seen much game time since two or three years ago yeah. um, and I think honestly he was excellent in the Champions League campaign that time they got the semis yeah. I think a few players were excellent Ziyech has been one of them will he cut in the Premier League that's the, the big question because he hasn't really seen that game time mm. in the Premier League I, I, I think to be honest I think there has to be a reason for that now mm. I'm willing to I'm willing to be proven wrong here completely before no, I get into there it are those, there are those. I'm willing to be proven wrong here but I think if two managers have seen him train the way Ollie's seen him train and Ragnick now is seen Thor Thor Ragnarok has seen him train <laughs> and they've, they've both gone they've both gone mm, I don't really fancy you I just don't know if he's cut for the Premier League that's all and again look, I'd gladly be proven wrong if he does well at everything fair play to him I just, I just personally I don't, I don't think he's I don't think he's up to scratch but I do think Ali could be an interesting one for Everton I think the biggest transfer for Everton though has to be Lampard yeah I mean, we had a discussion earlier about it, so yeah, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you bring up all flames, book one. <laughs> um, yeah. Look, the thing about Frank, I thought he was let go too early at Chelsea, but then again, you had look at Tuchel coming in, and you can't say that it wasn't justified after Tuchel won the Champions League, mm. and you can't say it wasn't justified after seeing how many wins Tuchel was getting and how organized we look. Mm. but the thing about Frank Lampard is he did a lot of good as well and I don't like slandering someone who does a lot of good because he did bring through all them players and he did play exciting football that's one thing I, I really liked and I don't know if that was exciting because it was all over the place basketball, mm. football or what but unexpected it was exciting look I, I, I wish him very well I do think that the Everton job is more suited to him it's that individual stepping stone he should have made maybe from Derby to Everton yeah, or maybe even something smaller so I do think it's suited more to his standard manager at the moment yeah it's the kind of thing where you probably for him you have to build up to a Chelsea job yeah like he went from Derby to Chelsea and I'm not saying this to stick a knife in or anything he didn't necessarily like set Derby alight now I know he said earlier about the playoff finals whatever you know but in, in essence he brought them a team that finished fourth to sixth uh, yeah. with better players and etc mm-hmm. but again we're not getting into it. I don't agree. Compare it. Well, I mean, it's tr- it is true though. Uh, agree, they yeah. lost in the playoff final as well. Uh, um, just about. Well, I mean, they still lost. <laughs> yeah, but look, like, you look al- at that team. Almost, almost doesn't count in football. Like, you, you look know at that I mean? team, Adzi. He brought, he brought true Mace down to that team. So yeah. you can't say it, it wasn't. Like the season Mason Mount and the season Harry yeah, but do you, do you the think, season Harry Wilson. Do you had. think Derby County fans give a fuck about Mason Mount playing for Chelsea? I think Derby County fans love them there. Yeah, but do you think they give a fuck now? Do they give a fuck now? Probably not. But look, like, the state that's they're football. in now. Yeah, yeah, that's football. That's no, football. that's not football. It, it is not football. football. It's not like I mean, they're shambles. Being, the way they're around the shambles as well. But it's, it's not football. Like nearly, but, nearly winning things doesn't matter in football. It doesn't. But you can't look at the season Derby had the year after Lampard yeah. left and tell me that. He wasn't doing a good job. Yeah, but he, you can, you can't tell the me that. Signs, no, the signs he made as Derby manager ran the club into the crowd like they're gone. They'll probably no, be buzzed by the end of the season. Adzi, you can't. You can't. No, I've I've seen him first hand, so I can. Like it, these things happen in football. So you're telling me, him bringing Tamori to Derby, him bringing Mason Mount to Derby. Did he win the playoff final? <laughs> Dead not at Derby. Did he, did he win the playoff final? <laughs> Did he win the playoff final? Oh God, oh my! Did he? He didn't win the playoff final though. No, you know no. I mean? So it's all, but it's it, a, did it's you watch a, the playoff final? Did you? Yeah, I probably did. Did you, did you watch it? Yeah, I probably did. Yeah. Yeah, and Derby played well in that game. And did they win? 
They didn't win. But they got it lucky. It doesn't matter though, Cran. It, it doesn't matter in football if you don't win. No one remembers who finished second. Yeah, I don't want to go in. No, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. I, I don't think he's I don't think he's what Everton need yourself. <laughs> of course you don't. I don't think <laughs> no, he's no. what Everton need. What what do Everton need then? They need stability. They, had, yeah. they need someone to stable the ship back. Well they're sixteenth in the league. Yeah. And you're telling me Lampard isn't good for Everton. Absolutely not. Well who is then? I think I think what Everton have done. Who, who I will think go what, to Everton? Now? I think what the Everton board Everton have Everton essentially done here. I think what the Everton board have essentially done here is got a, a gallon of petrol. And put it on a house that's on fire. <laughs> now you're, now you're, <laughs> no, no you're, I, I, I just think, I think everything, everything, everything needs stability. You know what I mean? Everything need whoever stability is, they need stability. Like you're talking about Potter at, at Brighton. Potter would have been a much better point than appointment than Lampard. The Potter wouldn't go there. Yeah, but as he said, does, Everton, not, does not say a lot about Lampard that he's gone there. Like Potter's in a job and Lampard, well, ever, he is in a job no, now. Potter's in a different situation because he has nothing to prove. He's a good manager already. Lampard, ha- he he needs to seek redemption now because he because he's been sacked by Chelsea. Yeah, but if, if, if it was if a humiliating you, if you're sack, you're allowed to be believed. He's a, he's a good manager. You know what I mean? You were saying he's a good manager. So I'm, was, I didn't say he was a great yeah. manager. Yeah, but you said he was a good manager. You just you have to be insane. He's a good manager. Look what he did with Derby. I said he did a good job at Derby. <laughs> I'm acting the politician now, but you yeah, know what I mean. Very pedantic. No, man. but I do think he's in that step zone. He's he's not had enough experience to call him good or a bad manager. He's he's neither he's neither good nor he's great nor he's bad. He's not there yet. He needs more experience and you need to see him more. That's my opinion. That's fair enough. I just don't think he's what Everton need. That's all. I don't think that's an extraordinarily bad opinion. Like I think No it isn't, it isn't. If you asked a lot of but, but you I'd, lot I'd of, like you to give me a name who they do need. Well I I, I would have my first choice would have been Par. Or it would have been Rogers. No, not necessarily that they go, but that would have been my. I'd have them way quicker than I would have Lampard. Yeah. Look, he could do great. I'm not. I'm not gonna say he's gonna do bad. He could do great. I just don't think he's what Everton needs. Yeah. yeah. I think Ali I'm, and Van I'm looking Beek forward to for. future podcasts where I'm sticking up for Everton and I have a yeah. reason to stick up for them now. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Leeds, Leeds have done absolutely zero this transfer window. Absolutely nothing. Um, they got rid of. Do they have funds? Do they have funds? They I don't know whether they do explicitly have funds. Mm. You know what I mean? But they're definitely <laughs> they're definitely not signing anybody. Minamino has been linked, but of course he's in Japan doing the qualifiers with them, so it's a tough situation for him to kind of get that move to Leeds. Um and then they got they got rid of a fellow called Cody Cody <coughs> Drema to Cardiff. And for whatever reason this really sent Ian mad. Ian was fearful at this. He was so angry because Leeds weren't bringing anyone in to replace. Yeah. yeah. And obviously they're in, they're in a bit of an injury crisis as well. But yeah, that's Leeds. Leicester have done absolutely zero as well. Bit uh-huh. of a bit of, I I think they need to send a half. I think they need a hero. <laughs> they need a hero to see them at the end of the night. <laughs> There's Vinnie O'Connor outside. Everything's training around there. No fans. No off. fans. It's terrible. Um, moving on to Liverpool real quick Ron. Luis Diaz from Porto 40 million euros I think it was a hijacking was it or a oh, hijacking I, I attempt I think it's unbelievable piece of business by Liverpool I have to say I think Spurs Spurs being Spurs and you know what it's happened again it's <laughs> happened again Tottenham Hotspur it's happened again but you're looking at Luis Diaz as, as kind of like his ability as a player He's a very quick player. He's very, he kind of fits the Liverpool mould. And yeah, I, I'm really happy with the sign. Yeah. I'd say, I think. A lot of, Liverpool do a lot of business in January, funnily enough. The strange kind of complex, like we've signed Suarez in January, we've signed Coutinho in January, Sturridge, Van Dijk, you know, Minamino and years gone by. Like we tend to do a bit of business in January that builds into next season. It's kind of forward planning. And I do think Luis Diaz is very much a player who Liverpool are thinking of for the future. And, the deal came about because Spurs were he was seemingly signing the contract for Spurs. And Spurs were giving him great contract, great money. They gave him, they gave Porto so much more money than we were giving them. Yeah. But the thing with it was they were giving it in installments, and Luis Diaz was like, "I don't want to go to Spurs. Yeah. <laughs> Get Jurgen on the phone." And Diaz was Klopp's first transfer target. It was his, his priority in the summer. And fair play to John W. Henry. He got he got the wallet out. He got he dusted the wallet down. <laughs> yeah, they're looking at uh, young Carvalho of Fulham. 
don't know if you know much about him Cron he, Ivan is it I think I think his name might be Josh Carvalho oh I could be wrong now I think it's Josh I'm Carvalho another fella but um, yeah out for Liverpool Nat Phillips Nat Phillips in the air Nat Phillips in the air I love Nat Phillips I'm really gonna miss him that was Nat Phillips in the and air and I'll love editing that later <laughs> <You're right. laughs> um, he's gone to Bournemouth on loan um, Liverpool got 1.5 million in loan fees and I think they'll get an extra 1.8 million if Bournemouth get promotion Captain Phillips so yeah it's a, it's a good move again I think I think Nat Phillips he's, he's, a, he's another fabulous player so yeah good move um, Man City brought in Julian Alvarez, twenty-two year old, never run. Um, fifteen point three million Argentinian. Probably very good though because it's Man City. Good. Yeah, <laughs> the recruitment is always a one. They're hoping he's going to be the next Sergio Aguero. Going out for them, Alvarez. He went back to River Plate on loan for the rest of the season, and then Ferran Torres, of course, gone to Barcelona for forty-nine point five yeah, million. Mad one, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, do you know what? I was going to say never really worked out for him at Man City, but there was a period in time when he was very prolific. I remember he scored a screamer against Newcastle as well. I think it was like a scorpion kick. Man United now, they've brought no one in. They've prevented Jesse Lingard from leaving the club for whatever reason. They've let Tunza Aibe go to Napoli, Martial go to Sevilla, and Ahmed Diallo go to Rangers. Well, I, I think that's an awful transfer, though, to be honest. Mm. Um, Newcastle Cran have brought in Bruno Guimaraes. Yeah. 37.9 million Chris Wood from Borney 27 million Kieran Trippier from Atletico Madrid 13.5 million and then Matt Target on loan and they're looking at getting Dan Bourne on loan as well it's okay yeah I mean Grimara is definitely well that's the thing I don't think you're going to get many top tier players in January so their, their tactic is bring in a few to paper the cracks for now yeah, and then we'll bring in all the good great players True. It's a challenge for top four in the summer. I think Guimara is, is a very good sign. And he was linked with he's linked with all the top clubs as well. He's a good player. Brazilian international. He's he's very good. I think he'll be he could be look, it's gonna take time for him to adjust to the Premier League, you'd imagine. Yeah. And it'll take even more time if he's sitting there playing with John Joe Shelby. <laughs> but um he is a good sign. And Chris Wood for me, we spoke about it earlier about Borney. I think I think it's an awful sign. I think Chris Wood I don't think he's 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 yeah, that good at all. You'd rate him at the bottom of the list, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, 27 million. Like, I think Borley have done unbelievable business there. The fact that we, Wakehurst has gone the other way, mm. and you, if you, you argue Newcastle could have went for him instead, yeah. he has at least over 17 goals a season, every season he's playing the Bundesliga. Yeah. Now, that would be diluted maybe slightly because if you look at every player that's come over from Germany recently, at least Tur- Timo Werner, um, the likes Kai of... Havertz. Kai Havertz, Sancho, they haven't really performed to those levels, the mm. goal scoring levels, but yeah, I'd still say I fancy Veghorst too though, yeah. to perform to a high level because Not enough of, how, of how Borny play. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think they'll play to the how he wants to play. He's a big boy. And yeah, I think he'll get bags of goals. Um I'm not I, I don't think Dan Bourne I don't think he makes makes much of a difference in Newcastle. Matt Target again, much and much and so I don't think these to are very to Dan Bourne now, the game I did watch from him recently he was playing in centre back and he was marking Lukaku I think and he mm. did mark him out of the game so he might be a, a cheeky good signing but again stick him beside La Salles or Kieran Clark <laughs> and yeah, you know what I mean you're fucked he's like. in trouble and with manager Eddie Howe who's unproven you could say yeah. you know, at a club like Newcastle yeah <laughs> Norwich have signed no one they've gotten rid of no one I think I've seen something about Cantwell earlier might be going to uh, Bournemouth on loan which I thought was a bit Strange, of a model. Yeah, he's a very good player, it was. Mm. So, Tampton have brought in Willie Caballero, former Chelsea player as well, wasn't he? Big Willie, yeah. Big Will. Um, they've let no one go. Spurs have brought in Rodrigo Benton Cole for 17.1 million. Dejan Kulisevsky from Juventus on loan. Good player. Um, and I was reading a report earlier from Fabrizio Romano, funny enough, um, that Carrasco was linked mm. um, which was, I thought was a bit of a mad one they're back in Conte aren't they Spurs to be fair and you look at who they got rid of real quick Brian Hill gone to Valencia Lo Celso gone to Villarreal alone Tangoy and Dombele gone to Leon alone and then it looks like Deli Alli's gone to Everton as well so they're, they're really back in Conte to the hill here I think he's trying to get rid of all the players they just want all the bums yeah mm. Um, 
and I think there's a few more I need to get rid of to be honest because sure. Rory's are rubbish looking at that list I think Benton is decent and I think Kulisevsky is decent yeah, I really like Kulisevsky. I really, yeah. really like Kulisevsky. And I think well, th- I think the problem is they haven't signed enough. Um, mm. And I don't know. I think the defender could have been necessary as well. <laughs> Tanganga. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's, he's rubbish. Mm. He's rubbish. And uh, Dyer. Dyer by name. Dyer by nature. God, Anthony. They're in trouble. Um, and, we, and Conte's whole philosophy is based on a strong yeah, back core. five. Wofford, who made all their transfers. Well, Claudio Ranieri was a manager. So just just a few a few of them now. Samir from Udinese, four point five mil. Kamara from Nice, who we talked about recently, three point six, and Samuel Kalu from Bordeaux for two point seven million. All bought under Ranieri. West Ham crown real quick. They're in the market for an attacker, and Lingard was the one likely looking to go to them. But um, Man United have said no. They got rid of Connor Coventry to MK Dons on loan. Um, a good Irish player. Wolves have brought in Huang for fourteen million. Hmm. And of course, I got rid of Adam Traore. Um, what 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 would your signing of the window be, Cran? Honestly, Adzi, um, I, I think the team that done the best business. And if you're talking about signing the window, and you're talking about Burnley, we we beg Yeah, I, 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 I genuinely, I I genuinely think uh, we Weghurst is a complete upgrade on Chris Wood, and they made fifteen million off it as well. I think Weghurst is probably signing the window. I think. For twelve million crown on a for a prolific goal scorer, and we're saying this next week's episode is going to be called the Veg Horse. <laughs> um, we're saying this without you know not knowing an awful lot about him other than seeing him the odd time and looking at his stats. But for me, man, it's an absolute no-brainer for me. I think that's one of the the signs of the window. I think Luca Dean for Aston Villa is, is up there. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's kind of everyone's transfer window up till that and. I, uh, I'm I'm glad we had a bit of a Peter Adam Wingy moment with Aubameyang well it's kind of gone through but it looks for I actually um, really enjoyed that chat yeah no I did as well so Adzi we've talked about Premier League transfer signings Euro trash and Euro treasure and tales just signings from Euro yeah so we're going to start off with Juventus and Cran you're going to you're gonna rate these signs out of a continental dish from whatever um, from wh- whatever country it's from. Yeah, I'm gonna give you the signs of Juventus this this window. <laughs> this is a lot of pressure. Dennis Sicaria from Borussia Mönchengladbach to Juventus for six point seven million out of contract in the summer. A player who was touted by a lot of people, a lot of different teams. United, Liverpool, I think City were from as well, and then Dusan Flavic, gone from Fiorentina to Juventus for sixty six million crown. <sighs> How do you rate those signings out of a continental dish? It's a... Uh, don't put on, don't put on a racist accent. Yeah. <laughs> pizza. <laughs> I mean, you can't do much better than pizza. Pizza. Pizza is the go. We move on into Milan, who've done a bit of a mad business. Today. So they got Felipe Casado from Lazio, sent the forward on loan. Anyone who loves the Premiership years will remember his little cameo from Man City way back when. They got Robin Gosens mm. from Atalanta, which I'm a bit sad about. The wing back. And they got Andre Onana Goalkeeper from Ajax for a free. I think that's a good window for uh, Inter. Free? Wow. Mm. Yeah, that that's... Ooh. That's a bit of caviar there. Yeah. A bit of caviar. Oh, well done. I was, I was like, I was like, what are you saying? And then I remembered. Mm. Atalanta Cran have brought in Jeremy Boga, an Ivory Coast winger. 18.5 million from Spasulo. Um, I don't know if you know much about him. I think he was playing at the Afcon. And from what I can remember... He is actually a Chelsea, former Chelsea Yeah, player. that's what I was thinking. Um, he's a very good player. He's a very good little player. Um, and I think Atalanta could be on, on something there. So what 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 will we give that crown out of continental dishes? What, what would you call that? That's one signing. That's Bruschetto. Bruschetto. Yeah. Bruschetto. Mm. Um, yeah, that, that's that's all for our transfer. Euro trash, Euro treasure. <laughs> slash slash continental slash. dish. <laughs> slash continental dish for Paul Hollywood. <laughs> Moving I, on. I got moving on now, Cran. I got you. I got you a little present. I got you a little present, Cran. I got you a vegan Kinder Bueno from Love Raw. Vegan, no artificial nonsense, no palm oil, cream wafer bar, salted caramel edition. There's two of these. We're gonna open it up now, and we're gonna have one each. You've been drinking yours with a Corona. All right. Um, I have evolved touch of fruit, mango passion fruit, sugar free with me. And this is the vegan agenda. This is it's all resting on this. Mm. 
Let's see the nice I I don't know what it's nice though. Not bad. You know what, Azzy? That is decent. That is decent. I always rate them on aftertaste. Because that's what the vegans do. Mm. They get you at the start and then get the aftertaste. Mm. Wafer. What a strong aftertaste. It's absolutely lovely. That is delicious. It is. It's a good alternative. Beautiful. Yeah. Shout out to Love Raw for sponsoring this week's episode. We're going to move on now to the AFCON, Cran. Quick update on the AFCON. I know I've been keeping an eye on it. I don't know if you have. We're at the semi-final stage now, being played on the 2nd of Feb and the 3rd of February. Semi-finals between Burkina Faso and Senegal. Yeah. And they will play the winner of Cameroon and Egypt. But just let's go back to the quarterfinals real quick. Burkina Faso ran out 1-0 winners against Tunisia, um, who had beaten Nigeria in the previous round. A bit of a shock result for Burkina Faso. Yeah. Edmund Tapsoba of Bayern Leverkusen has been absolutely immense crowd. Are you looking at the game? Edmund Tapsoba. I've heard of him, but I wasn't yeah. looking at the game. Well, yeah, during the semi-final... Senegal 3 Equatorial Guinea 1 Cran I did actually look at this one Yeah I was looking at it last night um, And it was funny Because I, I flicked on BBC 2 And this was on Yeah And I was like No way They're showing it on BBC The mm. whole time I wanted a bit of punditry And Jermaine Genius Was presenting Oh Christ And to be fair to him as he, I know we don't like him as pundit But I actually don't think He's a bad presenter I'll give that to nah, him. Fine. He's like alright. Yeah. He's a bit dry, but he's okay. Um, it was the first goal Senegal have conceded all tournament. Um, they've been very solid defensively. And to be honest with you, oh, there wasn't much between there wasn't much between them. And Sarah and Kuyate were both on the score sheet. Sadio Mane actually played very well again. Gambia nil, Cameroon two. Gambia have had an unbelievable tournament. They beat Nabi Caden's Guinea in the previous round. They only conceded one goal before the game against Cameroon, which they lost two 0 and that was against Mali, and it was a penalty. So Gambia kind of been very, very good. Cameroon, two goals from Toko Akambe. And by the way, Cameroon's previous game was against Comoros, and that was by far the game of the tournament. Yeah. You, you were looking at that one. I, I remember we were both looking at it. Because <laughs> it's a dancing, man. I love Comoros' dancing. Yeah, it was 2-1 to Cameroon in the end. Shakar Alhad Alhadhor, the left-back of Comoros, played in goal for them because their keepers came down with COVID yeah. and the moment of the tournament came when he done that double save I don't know if you've seen it I did. most unorthodox save you'll ever see in your life <laughs> left handed um, left handed and Yusuf Machangaima um, got a free kick in the game oh my god it was an unbelievable free kick <laughs> and they lost the game to it's one of the best free kicks I've ever seen yeah. oh. I, I, I've never looked at a game of football more I've never looked at a game of football and wanted the team to win more than like obviously the likes of Liverpool. But I was looking at this going, come on, Comoros, come on. <laughs> they were so unlucky. Stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> the Machangama goal free kick was unbelievable. Um, and Cameroon won in the end. I do think Cameroon probably weren't out the winners. This. It is it is in Cameroon. But um, they have a tough task against Egypt, of course. But real quick. It's going to be a game of the tournament. Egypt 2, yeah, potentially. Egypt mm. 2, Morocco 1. Salah carrying Egypt, man, to this fucking final. I swear to God. Um, a goal and assist in this game against Morocco. He scored the winning penalty against Ivory Coast. And by the way, real quick, <laughs> I want the Ivory Coast FA to be investigated by FIFA. <laughs> stop, I swear to God. No, 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 no. This has to be said, right? The, a penalty shootout, and they take off the most prolific striker in Europe at the minute, Haller, yeah. Sebastian Haller. The fucking game. Against who was it against? And your man dropped the ball. Sierra Leone. The game against Sierra Leone. And Stephen Calker gets a fucking assist. He drops the ball in the last minute, man, <laughs> and they only, score. Not only does he drop the ball, he drops it backwards. Yeah, in and the gives direct. it to fucking Calker, and they draw the game. Man, I want I want the Ivory Coast FA to be checked for corruption. I swear to God. Hakimi's goal in the game against Malawi. By the way, I don't know if you've seen a free kick. You're laughing here. <laughs> it's been a decent tournament. I've actually enjoyed yeah. it. It's been a good kind of, especially this weekend with no football. It's been good to have something to look at, and uh, I will miss when it's gone. So we'll predict. We'll predict the semi-finals real quick, Cran. Will we? Burkina Faso versus Senegal. I do think this could be a bit of an upset. I haven't watched much of them now, but they they are causing a few upsets. So yeah, um, I go one all extra time. I think it's gonna be Senegal going through. Yeah, I. We we've we've tried to predict this tournament so many stages over the past few weeks and we've gotten it unbelievably wrong every time. Um so I'm gonna go with Burkina Faso. Yeah. 
because I'm going with my heart here. I'd love to see Mane and Salah in the final against you. I really would. But just the underdog story of Burkina Faso getting a win against Senegal and going to the final would be great. I'd love to see Mendy get spawned as well. Yeah, it would be it'd be great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'd love to see, I would love to see Mane get to the final and win it, but I just really want Burkina Faso to win it. I'm just, just something about them that I'm really enjoying. Um, the other semi final is Cameroon, of course, against Egypt. We spoke with them recently. Yeah. I do think Cameroon will win the whole thing. I think it's kind of irrelevant who Cameroon play in the final. But again, a part of me wants Salah to win the whole thing now. That now that he sits far, yeah, I do want, I do want. So, in in my ideal world, my ideal world, it's Burkina Faso against Egypt in the final. Yeah, it's funny because uh, Cameroon as well. They have a booby card that scored loads of goals, so mm. it's gonna be a good game. I think I'll watch that one. Yeah, it's I think I watched two, two of them be good games. I'd say. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, there's nothing else on the telly. True. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's our Afcon update. <laughs> So we're going to move on now to our Get It Out segment. Get it out. That was weak, Azzy. Get it out. <laughs> Alberto Moreno. You know I love you, Albie. And we're moving on now, Cran, to the ultimate OnlyFans football podcast, Premier League team of all time. And how we're going to do this, Cran, is we're going to rank every position yeah. in a 4-4-2 formation. And we're going to do, obviously, fifth, fourth, third, second, first. And if a player is ranked fifth, they get two points. Ranked fourth, they get four points. Third, they get six points. Second, they get eight points. And the best keeper, of our opinion, gets ten points. And then we'll we'll put everyone's points together, and we'll come out with one keeper. And yeah, this will be happening bi weekly. So every it might be every two. It might be sporadically. Yeah, we'll do the left back if we have nothing else to get out. Yeah, we'll do the left back and etc. So. So this week, we'll start off with goalkeepers. Yeah, we. Ha- I think we have to. You know what I mean? For me, in any case, for my OCD, I need chronological order in my life. So I did request goalkeepers today. Um, and obviously, again, shout out to your mate, AJ, for coming with the idea. Yeah. We really do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, top five Premier League goalkeepers of all time. You can be assured that this is going to be full of bias, as most of the podcast is. But um, yeah, your number five, Cran. My number five. Um, I'm going to give it to an Irish legend I would say he's on the telly now him and Packy <laughs> Packy Bonner <that> is. <laughs> Shea Given ladies and gentlemen what a keeper yeah. for years Newcastle then he went to the um, newly oil funded Man City yeah. I think it was 2008 he moved and you know what watch him week on week when I was young he not much got past him you know what I mean? He was a very solid keeper. And being at, like, I wouldn't say big clubs, but they'd be, you know, mid clubs. He did very well. You know yeah. what I mean? I think that can't be spoken about enough. He's won the own, he's won the 16 keepers to get over 100 uh, Premier League clean sheets. And yeah, I just, I, I rate him very highly for Ireland as well. I thought towards his decline in his career when we were struggling for goalkeepers, we're not now. Yeah, yeah. Like Randolph coming in took a while, and I think we missed him dearly. So yeah, I'll I'll give it to Shea Give him number five, Adzi. Yeah, I'm I'm giving my number five, and a few people did say Shea Given as well. But mm-hmm. I'm giving my number five, Cran, to David De Gea. I, I, to be fair, he's, he kind of had a bit of a renaissance this past season. He's been one of United's better players, and even even when he was poor for United, because he did go through a period. Where it felt like every week he was making a mistake. Yeah. He was still keeping them in games. You know what I mean? Games that they could have been smashed in. 1,012 saves in the Premier League. Wow. He has won the second most overall of all time. He has the second most saves in the Premier League. And it's, you know, it probably says a lot about United's decline in the past few years. That he's facing that many shots. Ben Foster is number one for anyone who cares. But yeah, he has, he has one Premier League title as well. And yeah, I think David De Gea deserves a show. Not a bad show. I'd yeah. say... Um, You're number four. My number four, it's going to go to Edwin van der Sar. Growing up, he was unstoppable for United. Yeah. Um, he was a very good keeper and he was annoyingly good. Yeah. And I think him and, and Czech were probably the best in the league at the time. I don't know if van der Sar still holds his record, but there was a period in time where he held the record for most consecutive clean sheets in the Premier League. Yeah. Game after game for United when uh, I think it was 2008, 2009. Great season from him. But yeah, good show completely based on bias well it's not actually I think he does deserve a show 
I'm giving it to Allison. Too early for me now. Uh, well, I, I disagree. I think he's achieved a lot in his in his kind of short stint so far as Liverpool keeper. So he's been here in those years since you know, obviously his first season won Champions League, second season won the Premier League, and that fourth season as well. Slim pickings between ourselves and see it was one point in the end. There could have been a chance for us winning a Premier League and Champions League in Allison's fourth season, and he would have been pivotal in that. For me, of all of Liverpool signings, he's for me he's our most instrumental signing because in the years. Previous to him, we had the likes of Carius, Mignolet, Brad Jones. It was just awful keepers. Keep awful keeper after awful keeper. And he's come in and he's just stabilising it. And you know what I mean? He's a handsome bastard and I love Allison. And he scored Liverpool's goal season last season, which I think for me, header. a header in all of the Premier League years, I think it's one of the biggest moments in Premier League history. Um, the goalkeeper scoring a last minute winner, too. Given the circumstances of lockdown and even his own personal circumstances, his father dying and stuff. It was all, it was like it was like an act of God when he scored. So, <laughs> yeah, to Alison be fair. for me gets, gets fourth. You justify it well. Yeah, number three, Cran, for yourself. My number three goes to another Liverpool keeper. This is the shock for the books and it's going to trigger the it United fans. It shocked me when he said it to me. Though. It's it's going to trigger all the United fans who love Edwin van der Sar. Sorry about you, I'm picking Pepe Reina ahead of him. Oh, oh that's he. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I I even when he said it to me earlier, I was like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> and um, like, and listen, he, first, he gave a good reason for it. Go on, give let me just fire. All right, let me. He looks freezing there, doesn't he? Sorry, go on. Continue. Growing up now, this fellow was a bit of a pest for me, and I have to say, he didn't play in the best Liverpool team. So I think that's one thing that sticks out when I name this stat. Petr Cech has the most clean sheets ever in the Premier League. He has the highest clean sheet rate. Apart from one man. He has 46.6%. Reina has a higher clean sheet rate. He's 45.7. And he's the only man that's ahead of Petr Cech. Now, I'm not a big man for stats. It says something when someone as good as Petr Cech, when someone is ahead of him, it says to me that he's a very good keeper. Yeah. So I've put him toward. I think it's a good show. I, I do think it's a good show. I mean, I still think it's a bit of a mad one. I do think it's a bit of a mad one. If you offered me Pepe Reina or Allison, I'd always go for Allison. That's just a personal preference, but I do think I do. You've justified it, and you're not the first person that's, the person that said Pepe Reina to me today. Well, today. someone has to say, you know what I mean? Yeah, true, true. My number three, Cran, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of David Seaman, partly due to his name being Seaman. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen a lot of people put put David Seaman in the thing. That's only a joke, by the way. I seen a lot of people put David Seaman thing. I didn't. I didn't see a lot of David Seaman. Stop. What? It's not saying the same. Oh, no, I didn't getting... see a lot of him in the Premier League. Right. I didn't see a lot of him. So it's very hard for me to comment on someone who I didn't see a lot of. So I've decided to put Jens Lehmann in, who Arsenal bought for one point five million, um, in two thousand three. He's and a mad fucker, wasn't he? Yeah, I I have I literally have written here quality shit house. Um, he was the goalkeeper in the the Invincible season, and he obviously they won the Premier League that season and. <laughs> I personally just prefer, I just prefer him to David Seaman. That's all. I prefer him as well. Uh, there's actually one uh, one thing I remember. One time I was watching Lehman on the telly. <laughs> all right. And the ball went out of play. There was loads of players around him. The ball went out of play for a throw in. <laughs> he started running out yeah. to take the throw in. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, he was um, a mad fucker. He was a mad fucker, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a good shout though uh, your number two crap. Um, I'm going to give it to Peter Schmeichel very good keeper played with United from years 1991 to 1999 I stole that and then he went on to City which is kind of funny yeah Um, but yeah he's a tosser a lot of clean sheets I do, I do think I was I didn't grow up near watching Peter Schmeichel so I, I can't really comment on how good he really was mm. so that would be ignorant of me I won't do that but Based on the stats, I've gone for him. And based on all the noise of around him, I've mm. gone for him second. Well, we would have gotten dog's views if he wasn't involved. Yeah, exactly. So he had to be involved. He, you know, I think we have the same one and two, to be honest with you. I do, yeah. Um, and look at Peter Schmeichel. He's an absolute wanker. <laughs> but he played for United between 1991 and 99, as you said. Aston Villa, 2001 to 2002. He scored a goal for Aston Villa as well. Yeah. Played for Man City then from 02 to 03. He has five Premier League titles, uh, the 92-93 title, 93-94 title, 95-96, 96-97 titles, oh, yeah. and then the 98-99. So 
So he's the only keeper to do it to do two two peats, and that's a real American saying. But they they'd be like a three peat. Oh my god, <laughs> LA Lakers won three national titles in a row. But that's what they call it. He, he's the only one to win. Lakers. <laughs> he won two consecutive Premier League titles <laughs> twice, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. It shows how good he was. Yeah. Um. And one of the things that my dad always said when we were watching football about any keeper if he was performing well was you know a keeper making himself big and making himself a presence mm -hmm. making himself be known yeah and you know a lot of, a lot of goalies modeled themselves off Schmeichel from how good he was that's what my dad used to always say is like that's what Schmeichel used to do for United he used to come out and make himself big make himself a presence and look at that's why United won so many things you, you know what I mean you can't build a house without a foundation and Schmeichel was that foundation to that house our number one no that's weird <laughs> <laughs> right, so myself and Adzi both picked Petr Cech, and I think it's self-explanatory why. Yeah, like I mean, he had that awful head injury, didn't he, that time with Stephen Hunt, and put on the what, what would you call it? Like a, it was a helmet, was it? Yeah. And it's it's no, it's iconic. I'm not laughing about it. It's an iconic thing because I remember, like, when you think about Peter, when you think about Petr Cech, you think of his helmet and. It's like it's an iconic thing, like you know <laughs> what I mean. Have you ever seen the FIFA meme where he's like wearing it into the like <laughs> the conference meetings meeting and stuff? <laughs> yeah. Um, just speaking about real quick, four Premier League titles, two thousand four, two thousand five, oh five, oh six, oh nine, ten, and then fourteen, fifteen. He was all part of them teams. Four Premier League titles. He's just a great player. And don't forget the iconic, the iconic moments in the Champions League final. Yeah. You know what I mean? That those are underrated. I think it was Robin's penalty he saved. Mm. He saved Messi's as well. Mm. You know what I mean? He's on the run. In, like, you can't underrate a keeper like that. And his clean sheets record speaks for himself. You know, mm. he has... 202. 202. The most in Premier League history. As I said, the highest clean sheet percentage. And he's out there by a mile. 1,005 saves. The third most in Premier League history, by the way, as well. He's just... He, for me, in any ways, look at... Just look what Michael's won... It's definitely it's definitely Schmeichel or Czech. Mm -hmm. I think the other three are kind of irrelevant. Um, to be honest, um, I was gonna put Brad Friedel in for the laugh, but I didn't. Um, wait, wait for Steve and then when we're talking about right backs because he's coming. But um, yeah, that that's our top five. So I'll, I'll run through mine real quick. David de Gea, number five. Allison, number four. Jens Lehmann, number three. Number two, Peter Schmeichel, and number one, Petr Czech. Cran, your top five. My top five. It is Shea Given, number five. I've gone number four, Van der Sar, three, Pepe Reina, two, P Peter Schmeichel, and number one, Petr Cech. You better, you better check yourself before you better wreck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, folks. Yeah, what a show. What a, what a long show, but it's a good show. Very enjoyable. Yeah, well, I mean, we're after being kind of common on deadline day as a whole, but yeah, very enjoyable. Um, quick shout out to everyone because we could have a few newbies listening. Uh, our, our vo I'm not going to say viral because I, I I wouldn't say it's viral. The the TikTok that was put up recently of uh, Salve Wolves going through like a, a madman battering all the Brentford players um, has reached 16.3 thousand views on TikTok. Thanks for all the love and support as usual on our Instagram and Twitter. Everyone's and, welcome here. Yeah, absolutely. I, come here, everyone's welcome. We're, we're an open book. We appreciate all the love and support as usual. Cran, anything else to say? Yeah, just as as you said, just follow all of our social channels. We have loads of them now. Mm. I can't end them all at this point, but uh, that's it. Thanks everyone for listening. Yeah, so we leave it there. So we we'll leave it there. So. <laughs>